morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks. On Wednesday, the 18th day of October, year of our Lord, 2017, and welcome to the John Moore Show. Prepper tip of the day, I want to encourage all of you to uh, stock up on female hygiene products and birth control products. These are things that are easy and inexpensive to get right now during a long-term crisis. Well, good luck. That's all I can say. So your prepper tip of the day to stock up ahead of time and get several times more than you think you would ever might need them, by the way, several times more birth control products and, and uh, female hygiene hygiene products. You'll be very glad you did that, something you can always use in the future. We have patiently waiting in the green room, my friend, Professor James McKinney. Professor McKinney is a credentialed astrophysicist. He has taught astrophysics at the university level. He's taught mathematics at the university level. He's become a prolific author with 10 books and more on the way, weekly radio talk show host, man about town, uh, amateur archaeologist. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, John. How are you today? Well, enjoying uh, beautiful weather. We're short on rain here in south-central Missouri, and the, the ranchers are getting by okay. But uh, otherwise, it's it's beautiful here. How about yourself, sir? I'm very good, yeah. So, uh, just uh, uh, happy to be on this planet the John, you know, I I see so many things. I, I deal with so many things, and I see the infrastructure. Not, I'm not talking about roads and bridges. I'm talking about the the business infrastructure. The United States is extremely fragile right now. I don't know what's your opinion on that. Well, manufacturing, uh, due to uh, financial incentives provided by Congress, has mostly left the country. Uh, we can't blame China for what we did to ourselves. When you, uh, it's the nature of business and dollars to follow uh, whatever incentives there are. NAFTA and GATT and other trade agreements, those are the two big ones. Uh, and manufacturing uh, is what differentiates uh, first world countries from third world countries, isn't it, Jim? Pretty much, uh, yeah. The, the ability to basically have employment. And it's, exactly. it's, in a sense, it's really a crude uh, requirement for society that people be employed, that people can't figure out how to live without going to a 40-hour-a-week job. It's pretty crazy. It is. It is. Well, uh, and, and uh, places like California, of course, are, it seems like they're with intent. They're doing everything they can to... Uh, cause the educated, productive people to leave the state, leaving behind the less educated, less productive people to uh, suck up government benefits. Um, I just traveled out west, and uh, uh, several states, I was I was in a number of states, uh, Washington State, Utah, uh, Colorado, and so forth, and uh, every place I went, they were talking about the California transplants, most of whom are uh, people with uh, desirable skill sets that are productive, educated men and women who want to uh, not be part of the socialist state of California. Uh, I would call it a brain drain leaving California, wouldn't you, Jim? Uh, yeah, there's there are some successful areas, but they're very few, like up in uh, 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 Bellevue in Seattle. Is it Bellevue, the the suburb where all of the the but. Unfortunately, the success up there is due to Google, Apple, uh, you know, and other companies that um, uh, Amazon that have b based up there. But they're not they're not good companies. You know, they're they're big companies, but they're not good companies. They're not good for the people. Uh, these are companies that leech off of the public. Uh, in the worst way, and then infiltrate it with in disinformation and try and control public uh, views and and public reactions to you know everything from the Las Vegas shooting to uh, who's running for president. But uh, you know, and that's the success. And really, I used to work in the telecommunications and and information industry, and that should be a little teeny bubble on the side of of the normal economy and it's the major 
centerpiece of our economy. You know, so it, what's wrong with this picture? That, you know, we do not have a central economic base in this country. But the, what I was referring to in the beginning was uh, companies that provide services cannot provide those services. And they're, they're uh, uh, you know, at the fringe of existence, um, many of them uh, just, uh, if, if something goes wrong in their system, they can't fix it. Uh, I'm expecting within the next year, a lot of the people that sell water filters to not be there because they're getting them from India and China and other places where they simply have no quality control and they, you know, and that's just another example. But, um, uh, you know, companies that provide services like internet services, we see this all the time where companies uh, have internal problems and they can't fix them. And, and they don't tell their customers, they keep collecting fees, etc. That's right. the type of thing I'm talking about. And that's why I say, right. Things are really fragile. So you have a city like Houston go out where a lot of, of um, companies are based. And um, uh, I noticed that flights now from the north in the northeastern states of the United States, any flight south get traffic through Toronto now because of the Houston problem. Oh, really? It, okay. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, no, this is very bizarre. And if you're in the Southwest, you get routed someplace else. A lot of traffic used to hub through Houston and uh, especially West and, uh, you know, going on all directions. But now even uh, as far south as Chicago, they route them into Toronto and then someplace else. Right. I, I spent uh, a number of hours uh going to and coming from Europe and Toronto, and I was a bit disappointed they couldn't figure out how to keep the international uh, travelers in a secure area without having to go through customs. Uh, the uh, young lady, the, the Canadian um, authority in her in her uniform, asked, uh, I'm going to have to go past her to get, to get to the rest of the airport for my stay there, asked me what my profession was, and I said, What's the point? I want to be here for three hours. Well, you know, what do you want to know what my work is? So, so I said, how about radio talk show host? And uh, she uh, stamped my passport with a Canadian stamp, and I and I spent several hours having lunch and reading my Kindle in Canada. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Canada is very strange. I, I've gone into Canada too on airplanes and into Toronto also, and uh, I was going to a, a American Geophysical Union meeting up there. And I had tubes that had my uh, my presentation, my paperwork in it and stuff like that. Oh, my goodness. You know, I had to have my paperwork, my invitation letter. And it was strange getting into Canada. Like, you know, <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have to tell you. I might want to go fishing. Who cares? Right, you know? right. Oh, well, it's their country. I guess they get to do what they want. They are a sovereign state. Well, Jim, uh, the news has been full of really bizarre things for the past two weeks. Uh, uh, the most shooting in, in U.S. history, which um, I prognosticated the morning of the shooting, uh, that by the end of the day there would be YouTube videos claiming that nobody died, that there was only red paint, not red blood. And sure enough, by the end of the day, there were people claiming nobody died at the Las Vegas uh, tragedy um, and um, people can get really caught up in a lot of insane uh, stuff on the internet can't they sir well I, I've seen I've, I've looked at quite a bit of this myself and uh, the thing you could hear were the bullets hitting and the uh, and the uh, the charges going off but John if, I've listened to the YouTube videos and there's many um, uh, from being relatively familiar with guns and being in the field, like hunting and things like that, not military. I'm not a like you, a military person. But you can tell the difference between the, a gun that's pointed in a certain direction or pointed away, or you can, you can tell that there's two guns. And so there were multiple shooters there. There's no question. You could hear the – and they were overlapping – uh, rhythms of the shells going off 
So you could hear that. Uh, so there's definitely with multiple shooters, whether this guy on the 32nd floor ever fired a shot, nobody knows. Uh, I saw a lot of YouTube videos that were very much constructed. The guy gets on, he's very calm. He says, yeah, I was there. Uh, they arrested, they charged the man in the 32nd floor and shot him. And, uh, you know, he had the whole story laid out. And here's some guy that was down at the concert, supposedly. You know, and he just talked out the whole story and what happened on the 32nd floor and how the police charged in and shot the guy. And there's, in a, in a true courtroom case, you could not, uh, in, a, in a courtroom case, you could not prove that this guy fired a single shot. There's really no evidence. Uh, who shot and who was where, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, we don't know, but well, there were uh, multiple uh, shooters. I, I know that. Well, uh, uh, I'm, I have not seen evidence of that myself, Jim, but you, you can prove uh, or disprove that um, Mr. Paddock did fire a firearm by forensics. Uh, it will leave powder residue on his fingers. Um, uh, yeah, but so, but there, still, did he fire the shots into the crowd? I mean, he may, may have been dead before then, and they can tell when he died. You know, there's so much in this investigation that's just right. Uh, the, uh, oh, I, I don't I don't the, believe uh, forensics can tell within minutes. They can tell within an hour of when somebody died, but but not with the kind of precision that would be needed in this particular matter. Um, and then the, the, yeah. the, uh, just one other thing, <laughs> the security guard, this Jesus compost guy disappears. Uh, oh, he's back. He's back. He, um, I think he was on another TV show. He, he, I think he needed a break from all the intention, but he's back. He's not gone anymore. Um, anyway, let's move on from there, Jim. Um, sure. we have, um, you put you, uh, at my request, you, uh, authored an alert regarding La Palma, uh, oh, in yeah. the Canary Islands. Uh, this is a clear and present danger. I have private sources telling me that uh, the people connected to government are just quietly, privately evacuating the East Coast on their own. Let's talk about that. It is of huge importance. Well, uh, I don't know how many, how many earthquakes. The last count a, a day or so ago was about 150. Uh, and this is an area that's relatively quiet. Now, there's the good side and the bad side. When there are many small earthquakes, that means that the plates are moving slowly and adjusting. Puerto Rico, for example, has 11 earthquakes per day on the average, and that's why they don't have big earthquakes. They're sitting on the biggest trench and set of plate boundaries in the world in Puerto Rico, but they don't historically don't have big earthquakes there. Uh, the Canary Islands... Uh, has had major earthquakes there in which, and it's a volcanic rift zone, but the problem is these under, underwater landslides have broken loose and caused tsunamis which can cross the Atlantic in about six hours. And there's there's no way you could clear Man, Manhattan, let alone New York or the eastern seaboard, in six hours. Uh, you could, if it were well coordinated, the people inland would just start driving inland. Everybody would have to have full tanks of gas. Um, but the way the highways are there, if somebody stalls, which is going to happen, you have millions of cars trying to get out, then that lane is blocked. You know, you, unless you, you know, there's no way to get that car out of there. Right. So uh, trying to evacuate something like the East Coast would be just a, a massive disaster. In Florida, when they had the evacuation, they started with the southern counties, uh, thinking that, oh, well, we want to save these people first. Well, that was the absolute wrong thing to do. You got a Rick Scott, governor of Florida, is just an idiot. And so you have this massive amount of traffic coming north on two major thoroughfares, 95 and 75. And then as the rest of the state wakes up and goes, hey, this, this thing's coming here, so they all start going to the gas station, getting gas, buying water, and then heading out onto the freeway, jamming the freeway so that the people, you know, this massive amount of traffic coming out. And then as you get into Georgia, it's just bumper to bumper like a parking lot. And if, if those hurricanes, uh, like Irma especially, would have come and really hit Florida, you would have had millions of people dead 
on the freeway in their car. I mean, that's right. Millions, that's... Uh, countless millions dead on the highway because of an idiot governor. And the only reason it didn't happen is because the hurricanes kind of, uh, they shorted out down in the Keys and they really lost a lot of energy and it was dry air. They dumped most of their water down there. Uh, and so the, even though there were still 100 mile an hour winds, it was just dry air, 100 mile an hour wind, very different than 100% humidity, you know, rain, high water content in that 100 mile an hour wind. So, uh, but the East Coast, trying to evacuate the East Coast, I don't know, and who knows how far this thing would come inland in, say, low land areas like Florida. So, but the the bottom line is it, it doesn't matter because nobody's even talking about this. No, about they're evacuation. not. They're not. No, there's not going to be an evacuation. Um, well, it's, it's approximately 70, 80 million people are at risk. Uh, I don't have exact numbers. Not that it matters. Are at risk uh, all up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States, and um, this. Uh, Tidal wave uh, would travel right at the speed of sound. It would take, uh, what, about uh, six hours to get across uh, the Atlantic Ocean to the yeah, eastern to seaboard? To, to New York, maybe eight down to Florida. And the other thing is, as it washes around Florida, it would suck the water out of the western side of Florida and then come back in with a uh, reverberating wave into the west coast of Florida. So... Um, yeah, it it would be in in it. Uh, when I did the write up, I also talked about Greenland, Iceland, uh, Ireland would be susceptible. Spain, uh, northeast or northwest Africa, the part that faces the Canary Islands. Hold on, Jim. We got a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. It's taken three years before I could offer the inter-shelter domes for sale. During those three years, several different governments and militaries were taking all their production. The inter-shelter dome homes may be just what you've been looking for to provide affordable, energy-efficient, permanent, and attractive housing. These dome homes are prefabricated units that can be assembled in a few hours by two men with a ladder and simple hand tools. Check out the photos of these dome homes built in the Arctic on tropical beaches, in suburban areas, and in forests. All the details, many photographs, and the pricing of the dome homes are listed on the left-hand side of my homepage at thelibertyman.com. I think you'll find these homes are not only attractive, but they're energy efficient and a bonus. You can disassemble them and reassemble them as many times as you feel you need the need to. Pretty great, huh? Something that's very, very unique. Check them out at my website at thelibertyman.com. Thank you. John, we're back. J.R. Moore here on Wednesday, the 18th day of October, visiting with Professor James McKinney. Jim, you've got uh, two weekly radio shows. Tell people how they can listen live and the archives, if you would, please, sir. Yeah, thanks, John. It's every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time The uh, from WWCR Nash- Nashville, Tennessee, the James McKinney Science Hour at the Crossroads. That's my long-term commercial free show. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, this week I'll be continuing talking about what's down below us in the earth and how did it get there. And so uh, that's an ongoing couple show series. Then there's the 
uh, paid cast, which is available for $3.95 a month. And you get one week extra, uh, one hour per week extra deep dive into scientific topics. And uh, those will all be updated as of today. I've been a little bit behind because of the, the evacuation from Florida issue. But uh, that should all be updated today and moving forward. And so I'll be talking a lot about weather and September, October issues will be uh, dealing with uh, weather and especially hurricanes and the science of hurricanes, etc. But uh, all of this available on my webpage, jmccsci.com, and the archives. Okay. Well, speaking of hurricanes, uh, we've gone for a number of years without any significant hurricanes, and then all of a sudden it's it's blown up in our face. Um, Any prognostication on on why we're having so many hurricanes right now, Jim? Uh, Yeah, Uh, these are man-made. (laughs) <laughs> we got a hurricane Ophelia. It was uh, funny. I mean, this is it. It's not funny, but it's it's strange. Uh, I saw an announcement that it said, "Could a hurricane reach Spain?" And I thought, "Good grief! You know what? Are, what are they talking about?" And as like within hours, Hurricane Ophelia formed and started heading to Spain. Like, oh yeah, well they 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 thought that that should happen now. Now in 2017, hurricanes should reach Spain, and it turned north and it made a direct hit on Ireland. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, where is the warm water? Remember during Irma, during Maria, they're saying, oh, it's out in warm water, it's really building up steam now. So where is the warm water in the North Atlantic that fueled Hurricane Ophelia? And then when it moves into a certain region in north latitude, they say, oh, that's a uh, a post-tropical storm. That's what, instead of calling it a hurricane, because hurricanes aren't supposed to exist up there. And then they predicted that it would go all the way to Norway. Uh, Not exactly warm water up there either. So, no, this is these are man-made hurricanes. You can see them driving these storms. And it's the laser satellite technology. I mean, this is uh, insane what's going on. The other issue is that there's no energy in the solar system to drive these storms. So these are clearly man-induced storms. They they uh, can induce these by enhancing the electrical current between the ionosphere and ground and the cloud systems and basically artificially drive these hurricanes. Well, uh, these hurricanes have caused uh, uh, untold damage to uh, property and lives. And uh, will they continue? Uh, will there be more hurricanes this year? What do you think? Well, according to Mishu Kaku, who is a Tier 2 uh, spokesperson, like him and Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, take turns. They're like a tag team disinformation uh, on weather, but he says, "Oh, there's more water than warm water than normal, so expect lots of hurricanes this year." And uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson just came out and said, "Why don't we change hurricanes into electric energy to power our society?" You know, and what a complete moron! <laughs> but you know, those are your two scientific experts. But Misha right, Kaku right. says that yeah, we should have lots more. Uh, Okay, hold that thought, Jim. We got a break. Call number is 800 313 9443. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. We have a special promotion on my show from now until August. If you mail me a postcard, you may get the opportunity to buy an energy cleaner for $70 off retail. $200 of the purchase price goes to Republic Broadcasting. We have a drawing for this promotion every other Thursday. 
The details are at my website. Just click on the orange sticker on the right side of my homepage at thelibertyman.com. Thank you very much for listening, and hope you can get those postcards in. Have a great day. All right, we are back. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. J.R. Moore here on Wednesday, the 18th day of October. My website is thelibertyman.com. That's thelibertyman.com. The special alert authored by Professor McCanny is at the top of my homepage. You need to read it if you haven't, especially if you are somebody you know lives on the East Coast of the United States, Florida, the Caribbean, the Gulf Coast. Special alert regarding Canary Islands and uh, La Palma at the top of my homepage at thelibertyman.com. Also, my website, of course, you'll find energy cleaners. Uh, I use mine every night. I'm pretty active around the ranch here, up and down ladders, up off and, uh, up and down off my knees doing concrete work, painting, carpenter work, riding my 750-pound motorcycle. I go to bed with minor aches and pains. I wake up pain-free in the morning. You can also. If you have arthritis pain, it'll probably help. Joint pain, yep, help there too. Not getting a good night's, good night's sleep, it'll probably help you there. As well, back pain help you there also. Check out the energy cleaner at my website. It's only two hundred and eighty-five dollars, shipping included, to American zip codes. Check out the factory-made fitted mattress pads, and and you can place your order right at my website at thelibertyman.com using PayPal, Mastercard, Visa, and checks can be sent to my address at thelibertyman.com. Toll-free our line, twenty-four hours a day. Here it is: eight hundred five nine two nine five four three. I say again: eight hundred five nine two. 9543. Visiting with Professor James McCanny, his website's linked to my links page. Uh, Jim, we got two callers on hold here. First, we go to uh, Ty in Austin, Texas. Good morning, Ty. Good morning, gentlemen. Hope you're both doing great today. Thanks for taking my call. Um, Jim, I wanted to give you a quick, uh, uh, a quick plug before I ask the question that I have today, and that is a uh, great job on your stainless steel water filter housing. I received mine. Uh, late last week uh, for my office and my team at my office uh, so they could all enjoy the uh, ceramic filter, filtered water. And, boy, that unit is really sharp. Just wanted to say thanks for uh, taking the time to go through the design on that. It really came through well. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was a, a bit. Uh, these things happen, and uh, that takes us the, uh, the final step towards manufacturing all our own stuff. That was the one thing we still got from India, and now we're manufacturing that. So thank you for uh, mentioning that. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, anybody out there who has a doubter in their family or their team at work on uh, water quality, a real easy way to give them a visual is uh, freeze an ice cube from the tap of your city and then freeze an ice cube from uh, the JMCC water filter, and you will see the tap from the ice cube, uh, the, excuse me, the ice cube from the tap is uh, going to be cloudy. You're not going to be able to see through it. The ice cube from the filtered water is going to be crystal clear, and you can look right through it with just a little bit of crystalline, real pretty crystalline structure. So for folks who just don't get it and they need a visual, that's one way to do it. But uh, anyway, on to my question, and then I'll up off. It's kind of off topic, so I apologize if it maybe doesn't fit, but... Uh, I was listening to an interview of a Dr. Norm Sheely, I believe, and he was discussing uh, scalar energy devices, and there happens to be a company out there called Q-Wave putting these things out. And I was wondering, Jim or uh, uh, John, if you guys have heard of this type of device. Um, I can go further, but let me shut up because you may know what I'm no, talking about. No, no, no. Uh, go ahead. Just uh, describe what they're doing or what, they, what their claims are. Well, the, the claim is um, that it is in, they, these devices will emit a, a scalar energy field depending on the size of the device, which is going to give you um, their claims are protection from EMF radiation, uh, increased focus, um, decreased anxiety. Basically, uh, if, if anybody wants to look this up or we need to move you know, on to another topic and come back to this later with more research. 
the scalar energy is going back into some Tesla science. So I thought, Jim, you might be the perfect man to, if you don't know anything about it, maybe give it a look-see because the claims are great, but I'm hesitant to go and drop $300 on something before I have somebody I trust um, you take a look at it. So uh, Okay. That's all uh, I yeah, that, um, the... Uh, I've been asked to like evaluate products like that, and um, uh, for example, th that it uh, breaks uh, uh, microwave radiation from affecting you. Um, that those kind of claims, you know, I, I wouldn't believe them, and so some of the claims do not sound believable. Uh, you cannot cancel light or radiation with other light and radiation. Uh, that's that's simply not possible. Uh, so I'm not sure, you know, it, I'd have to look at it without making any positive statements, but, um, uh, you know, it, it's hard to say, you know, exactly. And those sound like medical claims so then we're getting into something when it starts to affect people, uh, you know. So those are, yeah, those are areas that uh, would need a different type of testing than, say, just an off-the-cuff uh, opinion. Uh, understood. Well, if if just by mention of the term scalar energy, if that doesn't elicit a, a knowing response from you, then I'm going to go ahead and chalk this one up as a possible bovine excrement. But uh, John, was there not a, a mention on a show uh, on the energy cleaner a week back where Tom is working on some other type of device or product that was in the in the works? Am I dreaming this? Or, or no, no, he, he is. In the, Tom doesn't get in a hurry, and he is working on another uh, healing device. Yes, he is. Okay, but we haven't gotten to a point where we can sh learn more about that yet. It's 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 not time yet. It will be soon, I hope, but I I can't say a date. Okay, gentlemen, thanks for your time today. Okay. Have a great afternoon. afternoon. All right, thank you for the call. Any follow up, Jim? Before we go to our next caller. Uh, well, I appreciate him mentioning the stainless steel containers. It, it like anything, it always takes longer than what you expected. But everything in the in the past has been shipped out, and we're we're taking new orders for the stainless steel. Then now we have the Traveler, which is the two-thirds size, which we did not have before. We lost that about a year ago or a little more. And so that's back now. And the quality on these is uh, superb. And it's under our own control. And so, like, literally everything now is uh, manufactured and in the U.S. and controlled in the, my very own factory in the U.S.A. So... That's that's a really good uh, issue. And then also just to comment, uh, the testing that we do on the filter elements uh, exceeds the NSF standards. And so it's uh, that's a complicated issue. But uh, the, the NSF standards, let's just say, are mm, out of date or old. And with new things like chloramine and other... Uh, new chemicals that they're putting in water and in, uh, in they're finding in water, uh, we have to test uh, beyond NSF certi certification standards. And so, anyway, that's something that's very complicated. It's and, and, your water filters, you know, and your water filters are for sale at my website at thelibertyman.com. Next, we yes. go to uh, Fred in Wisconsin. Good morning, Fred. Morning. I, I just want to start out by saying that my RBN check was put in the mail yesterday. Uh, I, I really feel this is an important program. I try to catch this every chance I can. Um, I, I heard you talking about the, the hurricane thing, and uh, I was kind of steered in the direction that it had something to do with HARP. But I think, I think if I heard you correctly that it was laser-based like satellite. Could you explain yes. that? Uh, yeah, it's uh, something I talk about a lot, and it's a project that I worked with Russian scientists in the mid-1990s to develop a system to direct hurricanes offshore so they would dump their water out in the ocean and drive them into the North Atlantic where they would dissipate. 
because you take them out of that central ion sheet that powers the hurricanes once they're connected. So it was a method of never having hurricanes again. And the, the technology was given to the U.S. military to do that, and unfortunately they weaponized it and turned it against the American public. And that's where we are today. The hurricanes, the, all the hurricanes we've seen this fall, Harvey, Irma, uh, Maria, and Jose, and then uh, Ophelia, were all man-made. And for, so is it uh, satellite-based? Yes. Yeah, there's three. We, we know specifically of at least three satellites, and you need three satellites to cover the globe. So you have continuous coverage. And they sent those up in the early 2000s. The Russians went to the United Nations to uh, demand a peace treaty regarding weather modification as a weapon of warfare. The United States refused to sign it. And that's where we are today. So, uh, you know, this is, this is the historical facts. And then you have uh, people who I really despise, Mishukaku, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, who are the spokespeople or people at NOAA or the National Hurricane Prediction Center, a bunch of complete buffoons who are tier two science and keep pushing this narrative that warm water creates hurricanes and, uh, you know, the, the garbage that you see in the news to keep the public uh, from understanding what's going on here. Now, could this device create tornadoes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, tornadoes are an essential part of hurricanes. They can, the tornado is the same, same issue. The energy comes from a discharge with the cloud system, with the ionosphere, and uh, the, when the currents hit the ground level, it's a, uh, it ionizes the air and it sucks it up a tube, and that's what a hurricane is, that's what a tornado is. You have lots of tornadoes on the leading edge of a hurricane. In fact, Tampa uh, had a, a dry hurricane move in, Hurricane Irma, and there was the only real damage was when a lot of tornadoes moved through Tampa. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, it's not reported in the news, of course, but that's the same exact physical process. And they don't create hurricanes. They simply enhance the process. Well, I wanted to thank you for the uh, explanation, and God bless you people and everything you do. Okay, thank you for the call, Fred. We appreciate it. The call number is 800-313-9443. Well, it's looking more and more like HARP is antiquated, and, and uh, I don't know what they'd be using it for, but uh, I guess it could still be used for some weather uh, modification, couldn't it, Jim? Well, it, HARP is a, it's like a broad spectrum. It, it, it cannot be focused very well. Uh, it affects other regions. It's, it was an experiment from the 1950s. And, it, yeah, it's been overplayed as a source of weather modification. Uh, they can heat up, uh, basically heat up atmosphere in another location using uh, radio waves that refocus in a certain region. Uh, they can use it in conjunction with aerial spraying or chemtrails. They can use those things uh, in conjunction. They can disrupt uh, GPS uh, with with uh, um, uh, with HARP. So uh, it, it by changing the atmosphere by they can change the level of the ionosphere or the ionization in the ionosphere, so it can affect GPS. So there's things like that that it can still do. But it's not, in terms of hurricanes, no. It's not a viable, it has nothing to do with hurricane manipulation today. All right. All right. Well, that's, I, I can't say it's good to know because I, I just t took something that's more powerful and more accurate and more dangerous to replace it, didn't I? Right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, our tax dollars at work. Isn't that wonderful? Well, and you oh. have to understand that the, the people that are doing this are in the deep state. I mean, we have uh, just another example, the FBI controlling the investigation in Las Vegas. That poor sheriff down there looks like he had a pole stuck somewhere when he was giving his talk, and there was a guy that looked like the 
the the axe man from you know the guillotine man from the middle ages standing behind him he was sweating bullets you know and we have a deep state that's still very active very much in control so and that's where this is coming from uh and the, apparently there's no way to get trump to to act on this he's simply responding to uh, uh, what appear to be natural disasters right well I, I have no reason to, to disbelieve Donald Trump's doing everything he, he can do to help us. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a momentous uh, mountain of uh, things to take care of. He, and on the good side, he is incrementally dismantling uh, the Obama administration uh, measures that were put in place under Obama piece by piece. Uh, before the end of the year, Obamacare will be finished and over with uh, by executive order. Uh, through the funding, uh, the funding was that was done, that was done was illegal, uh, and um, President Trump has stopped that, which brings the uh, the whole thing, whole scheme. And I, it is a scheme. Uh, the Obamacare scheme will be brought to an end before the end of the year, which is only less, less than three months away. Um, yeah, well, the, the it was never meant to be a health care uh, under Hillary Care, which was in the the nineties when Billy was or whatever he was there, um, uh, the the whole issue was to bring people into a government program so that they had access to all your health records and your body. That's what it was about. It was never about health care. Well, uh, and I, I, when I'm speaking with people privately, I, I begin the conversation this way. The, the, real, the foundational question is, what is health care? Not, not all these other things. And that question is never even discussed publicly, is it, Jim? No, no, it, it's absurd. Um, in the past, oh, let's say, year, I've been traveling in third world countries. And I, I was kind of sick for about a week, so I finally went to a doctor, and he gave me something to get better, and I did get better. Uh, total bill was under $30 for the doctor visit and the medication. Um, then I was bit by a scorpion. Um, it happened to be in my boot, and I didn't hit it hard enough to to shake out anything. That, so anyway, well, ended up in the emergency room. My total bill, once again, under thirty-two dollars for emergency room, and okay, uh, I got I got I got After the break, I'll share something that we learned in Vietnam to help you, sir, and uh, we will discuss that when we get back from the break. Stay tuned. Wednesday, the 18th of October. Jim, there's a trick I learned in the Mekong Delta in Vietnam I'm going to share with you and all of our listeners. When you take your boots off and um, put them next to your bed, you uh, tuck a sock in the top of each boot to help prevent creepy crawlers from uh, crawling in there. And then when you remove the socks in the morning, of course, you vigorously shake and bump the boot to make sure nothing got in there on top of having the sock tucked in there. And maybe that will help you, sir. Uh, yeah, no, I, I've learned my lesson, and I typically did that, but I, you know, the little critter hung in there, and um, and I did, uh, went out in the field, and I was doing quite a bit of work, and I came back, and it's when I was taking the boot off that I felt this, you know, sting, and right. uh, the doctor said if I had a sock on, it would have gone, it was a very dangerous scorpion, and it would have gone a lot deeper. But it just scratched the surface, and I just had a sore toe for a while. Right, right. But, it's uh, funny. But yeah, I, I, yeah, after correct. half a century, I still pick up my foot gear in the morning, and I bump <laughs> it vigorously. <laughs> <laughs> it's creepy. Man. Yeah. Uh, you know, old I've hap, been bit by habits. other things. Those, those, those big centipedes that you find in the tropic, I got nailed by one of those in the hand one time. 
Oh, baby. Yeah. That and uh, yeah, it, uh, many days of pain. And, uh, but, uh, but my point was that my doctor's appointment at the emergency room and they had given me a shot too, just to make sure. I don't know, it's like an antibiotic. I can't remember what it was, but the whole bill was $30. Right, and so right. the, the problem with American health care is it's just too much money. I mean, as much as I dislike Bill Clinton, he made a very astute statement when he was starting to be president. He was going to go in and, and uh, try and route out the books of the insurance company, something that nobody has ever successfully done. And uh, number two, when you have a doctor visit costing $450 for five minutes, you know, that's just the ticket to get in the door. It's, uh, you know, you, you cannot pay for this, and then you have lots of people that come in who've never had health care, and, you know, they go live at the doctor's office. Every day they're there, and they don't pay anything into the system. So, you know, it, it can't work. I don't care what you do. It's a, it's a system that can't work until you fix those problems. Right, right. Well, you know, uh, I don't regard what most Americans call health care as health care. I want anything at all to do with except for the emergency room. Obviously, if you're injured, an Ameri a modern American emergency room is the best place to be. But otherwise, they can keep what they call health care and their allopathic uh, uh, protocols that they go through, sir. No, yeah. I, it, unless I have something, if I have a broken finger or something that needs a doctor, literally, but otherwise, yeah, you will not find me anywhere near a doctor for what they, you know. Okay, well, we're down to the last 30 seconds here, Jim. Any final words for our listeners? Well, uh, just hang in there. That's all I can tell you. Uh, if the United States suffers another major natural disaster, you know, we're going to be in trouble. Okay. Thanks, sir. Have you back next week. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Top of the hour break. We'll be back. Stay tuned. All right, we're back with Jim and Jerry Moore here. Our second hour on Wednesday, the 18th day of October. Prepper tip of the day. We encourage all of you to get a really good supply, a large inventory of feminine hygiene products and birth control products, both. Even if you don't think you're going to need them, you may have a guest, an unexpected guest, who would need those products, and um, it, it will uh, make you a hero in the eyes of whatever woman needs those products. Keep in mind that uh, young women grow up to be uh, childbearing age and uh, have plenty on hand for them also because they'll be growing up. That's your prepper tip of the day. Uh, we were helping, helping help. <laughs> <laughs> we were hoping to have a guest this hour, but uh, he has not called in yet. If he does, we will uh, bring him on, and um, we'll discuss uh, the topic that he's going to be uh, coming on the air to, to discuss with us. Okay. Um, let's go to my website at thelibertyman.com. I know many of you listen and go to my website while I'm live on the air. At top of my homepage, you really need to read the uh, alert written by Professor McKinney, the banner at the very top says, Is La Palma about to fall into the sea? This serious stuff. Uh, you're not going to find any mainstream attention to this of any consequence. They may mention the earthquakes, but they won't mention the consequences of those earthquakes. They won't. That's not going to happen. Clear and present danger. We know, because the evidence is clear, that this has happened in the past. Earthquakes in the Canary Islands can cause massive slides of rock and dirt into the ocean, causing tidal waves. I'm not real uh, enthusiastic about using the Japanese term for tidal waves, a tsunami. I never heard the word tsunami until about 15 years ago, quite frankly. Causing tidal wave that would go across the Atlantic Ocean at about the speed of sound, take about six to eight hours to get across there, depending on where you are, and take out the east coast of the United States, causing the uh, deaths of tens of millions of people, the destruction of their homes, their businesses, their schools, the hospitals, uh, all the infrastructure that supports all those people. 
That's real. It's a clear and present danger. Now, Professor McKinney says the British Isles are at risk, um, Portugal, and so forth. Um, you need to be aware of this. You really do need to be aware of this. A lot of focus uh, among tens of thousands of people on Planet X and what it may do. A lot of focus on when it's going to happen. Uh, people uh, taking photographs of uh, things in the sky they have nothing to do with Planet X, but they get a lot of attention within that community. I don't pay attention to them, quite frankly. Uh, it seems ironic to me that uh, somebody claims to see uh, walk out in their in their yard in uh, England or Ireland and see two suns, and it doesn't occur to anybody why they can't see two suns in Maine or Florida or uh, California. <laughs> if there's two suns, there's two suns, not just over the British Isles. This is really strange. I, I wonder if people's brains are functioning properly when I read this kind of thing and see these photographs. Clearly, obviously, if there were two suns over the British Isles, there would be two suns over New York City and Chicago and Los Angeles. But there's not. There's not. But getting back to my website, we have Field Training Exercise USS Liberty, December 31st, 2018. I haven't talked about this for a couple of weeks. I've been doing talk radio now since the mid-1990s. I started, uh, what was it, 1995. I had to take a a break when I ran for U.S. Congress in 1996, back on the air, uh, until, what, what was it, 2000, and then another break, and I came back on the air here with Republic Broadcasting around uh, 2005, I believe. Uh, I've been talking about preparedness for 21 years on the radio, 22 years, 1995, yeah, a long time. Initially, the discussions were pretty uh, uh, generic in 1995 and part of 96. The topic of Y2K came up around 1997, which was a a real man-made of a uh, possibility. Uh, I, I know people at very high levels in IT then and now, and it was a man-made uh, threat that had a man-made solution, and the solution was achieved, by the way. During 1998 and 1999, mostly 99, 10 years' worth of computers were bought by governments and corporations to resolve that matter, which for the most part was resolved. Topic of Planet X... Tenth Planet, Wormwood, the Destroyer. It, uh, it it covers a lot of area uh, in terms of uh, science and archaeology, uh, astronomy, obviously. I first became aware of this in the late spring, excuse me, late winter, early spring of 2000, when. Two, fr two friends of mine, both independent researchers, approached me. One didn't know the other was approaching me about this topic. It sounded pretty strange to me at the time, and I, I uh, was politely listening and thinking to myself without saying anything, man, you guys need tinfoil hats really bad. 17 years ago. I know more about this than most people, not as much as some. I don't claim to know nearly as much as Professor McCanny. I do know that the government sent up the Pioneer 10 space probe looking for this thing, and they found it in 1979. On one hand. On the other, they've been aware of disasters related to this for decades before that. And we're finding the evidence. The evidence is at my website at thelibertyman.com. Scroll down the left side. And you'll see where it says global sea rise, global sea level rise. Coincidence or foreshadow. And then the images are from movies, television shows, magazines, a couple other sources, but mostly movies and TV shows. Going back to the early 1950s, the earliest image we've got so far 
is from Look Magazine, July 1952. Now, if you're under age 50, under age 55 or 60, I'm not sure where that break point would be. You may not realize how big those monthly magazines were um, in um, the 1950s and 60s. They were huge, massive, tens of millions of copies sold every month, monthly magazines. They were large format, full color, beautifully done, beautifully laid out with huge subscriptions. So let's look at that 1952 image. It says image 17. Click on it there. And it says, hunt for the flying saucer. Now, in the the late 1940s, early 1950s, uh, there was a lot of media attention to people seeing these unidentified flying objects. That's what this article is about. It has nothing to do with earth changes, violently rising ocean levels, Planet X, None of those things. It has to do with flying saucers. So this is a black and white image of the lower 48. doesn't include Canada or Mexico. An outline of, of the lower 48. You can see the outlines of the 50 states. If you look of the 48 states, excuse me, if you look carefully. Of course, at the time, there was only 48 states. <laughs> Hawaii and uh, Alaska were still territories, not part of the United States at the time. And you can see superimposed on the 48 states, these disks and the names of the towns and states where they were being sighted. And you look more carefully, you see the uh, East Coast, the Gulf Coast, and the Mississippi Valley is, is dark, dark, shaded and dark colored. There's no explanation for that. But that is the Navy map. You also see on the West Coast uh, what's called the Inland Sea of California darkened in. And up around uh, Seattle, Washington darkened in and uh, part of Oregon darkened in also. It's a Navy map. It is the Navy map. It's, it's very well done, by the way. It shows an Inland Sea stretching up, wiping out... Uh, well, we got uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, basically all gone underwater. Uh, part of Tennessee, part of Kentucky, into southern Illinois, the Boot Hill, Missouri, into uh, the eastern half of uh, Arkansas, and a really big chunk of Texas underwater. The Navy map. That's what this is. It is the Navy map. So, going back to my website from there. We have all these other images. Uh, going back to uh, just a few weeks ago, the oldest TV show or movie we came up with. Let's see if I can identify that here. I believe it was, uh, yeah, it was a movie done in 1954, a uh, what I would call a B-grade time uh, crime movie, titled The Miami Story. That's 1954, and let's click on that. And it's basically the same map, um, pretty much identical, uh, a little bit larger. The, um, the the states and the boundaries of states are are uh, laid are easier to see, but it's basically the same map. And then one of the maps I really like only jumps forward another couple of years to uh, Highway Patrol. 1957. Same map. It is the same map. Highway Patrol 1957. Now, as I frequently mention, that uh, TV show uh, in 1957, if you're under 60 years old, uh, well, if you're 60, you would you would not, you would just been born it. You'd have to be probably in your, in your late 60s, early 70s to even remember the show when it was broadcast live. Of course, with YouTube, you can watch it uh, anytime you want right now. I was 10 years old when that movie, when that TV show came out in 1957. And I, I was a, a, I, I was a regular 
uh, viewer of that television show, Highway Patrol with Broderick Crawford. United States of America in 1957, there was everybody in the country, more than 200 million people, had their choice of three television shows to watch. Not 200 plus three. One, two, three. That was it. ABC, CBS, ABC, uh, NBC, C- CBS, and ABC. That was it. This particular show, Highway Patrol, was hugely popular and and got the majority of viewers in their time slot. They did. And when you go through the list of films that have been produced since then, you can see they picked the winners. Uh, as I sometimes say, can you call yourself Ameri- an American and not have seen the Godfather trilogy? I mean, come on. Those three films, who hasn't seen those? Pro- I'm sure there are plenty of Americans who haven't, but hugely popular. Great image there, by the way. We've got Superman, The Hunger Games, A Beautiful Mind, Superman Returns, NCIS, which bears special mention. And I, I want to urge all of you, if you do watch NCIS, which probably a large percentage of you do, we still have not got gotten a crystal clear, sharp image of the map on the wall of the director of NCIS the director of NCIS has a nice wood paneled wall uh, office very well done on the wall facing the audience pretty much every time they have that office is a is now it was initially a plain frame but now it's a nice gold framed uh, map of the uh, lower 48 with its own light on it illuminating it it's a navy map uh, the ones we've gotten so far, you can see that there's no Florida and no Baja California. It's hard to tell much else about it uh, other than Florida's underwater and Baja California's underwater. So you, you fans of NCIS, come on, help me, help us out here. Let's get a nice, crystal clear, sharp image of that map. It has to do with the engineering of these TV cameras. They can only focus on one thing at a distance at a time. So they're focused on these actors. The actor is going to have to be right next to the map. And I, I believe it's going to be in an, in an earlier um, a segment, uh, an earlier ver- version of this uh, TV show uh, episode, an earlier episode of this TV show, uh, NCIS. Um, with the, with the map on the wall in the director's office. If you if you can get an, the first person who gets a nice crystal clear sharp image of that map on the wall of the director of NCIS, you get your choice in any of my five DVDs, any one of them, as a thank you. Uh, it would it's uh, something we need to do. It's kind of a follow up deal. Moving down the line from there, we've got Captain Midnight of the Children's Saturday Morning TV Show, 1955. Elysium, an African, the African continent. The TV show Dancing with the Stars, kind of stylized, but you can tell it's they left out some parts of continents there. A uh, poster inside a, a Japanese restaurant in Austin, Texas, stylized once again. Tyler Perry's A Medea Christmas. That's an interesting image. Let's let's click on that. Um, we've got what appears to be a classroom. Uh, my presumption is it's an American elementary school. Uh, boys and girls around, I'm not good at judging children's ages. I'm going to say around 10 to 12 years old or so. Look like they're bored to tears. <laughs> it would rather be someplace else. One little girl looks like she's a bit apprehensive. So you can see in this image, let's see, four girls and three boys. And on behind them is a map of the world. And um, when you enlarge it, and let's, let's just enlarge that map here. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there's no Florida. Florida's gone. How about that? No Baja, California. Here's our break. Call numbers 800-313-9443.
Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. It's taken three years before I could offer the inter-shelter domes for sale. During those three years, several different governments and militaries were taking all their production. The inter-shelter dome homes may be just what you've been looking for to provide affordable, energy-efficient, permanent, and attractive housing. These dome homes are prefabricated units that can be assembled in a few hours by two men with a ladder and simple hand tools. Check out the photos of these dome homes built in the Arctic, on tropical beaches, in suburban areas, and in forests. All the details, many photographs, and the pricing of the dome homes are listed on the left-hand side of my homepage at thelibertyman.com. I think you'll find these homes are not only attractive, but they're energy efficient and a bonus. You can disassemble them and reassemble them as many times as you feel you need the need to. Pretty great, huh? Something that's very, very unique. Check them out at my website at thelibertyman.com. Wednesday, the 18th of October. That was uh, Dixie, uh, widely regarded as the national anthem of the Confederate States of America. I don't know if it was officially or not, but close enough for me. I find it ironic that uh, 150 years following the end of the War of Northern Aggression, we have all this attention to monuments uh, to the Confederate uh, soldiers that were erected. I just read this morning about a a school uh, named after Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederate States of America, being renamed uh, after Barack Obama, of all things. The I have to admit, um, the uh, public education system, which uh, is heavily influenced by the federal government, has been quite successful in uh, changing history and causing people to uh, misunderstand what really happened I I did watch the film Lincoln I I did it as a matter of opposition research they had uh, two African American Union soldiers um, in the film Um, I forget if one or both of them recited the Emancipation Proclamation from memory in a very emotional uh, scene there, the Emancipation Proclamation. (laughs) If the Civil War was about slavery, which it wasn't, the Emancipation Proclamation would have been issued the first day of the war, which, of course, it wasn't. Now, most people don't know, and I'm about to tell you, this is kind of a secret in, in plain sight. The Emancipation Proclamation did not free the slaves in the United States of America. I will say again, the Emancipation Proclamation did not free the slaves in the United States of America. We had two countries. It was obviously not a civil war. A civil war takes place inside the confines of one country such as the Spanish Civil War. That was truly a civil war. No, it it was a war of aggression, one country invading another. But there was uh, the United States of America, and then there were Confederate States of America. In the United States of America, we had Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, and Delaware. Those four states never left the United States of America. They never became part of the Confederate States of America. And all during 1861, 1862, 1863, 1864, most of 1865, men, women, boys, and girls were bought and sold in slave markets in the United States of America. Come on, guys. If the war was about slavery, 
why were men, women, boys, and girls bought and sold like potatoes and firewood inside the United States of America? We, so we were invading a separate country to stop slavery, all the while having slavery openly practiced in the United States of America. What's wrong with this picture? How could this be? How could this possibly be? How can you possibly be fighting a war against another country to stop something while you're engaging the same practice in your own country? Is that even possible? I don't think so. I read an article this morning that brought this to mind at one of my favorite websites, Amoland, Amoland.com. The author was prognosticating and making his, um, setting his belief that the, uh, it's called the Civil War, the War of Northern Aggression, was about slavery. No, it was not. How could it be? How could it be? That's not possible. Here's our break. Got a question or comment? Give us a call at 800 313 You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Moore here. We're continuing our energy cleaner promotion, which began August of 2016. In this promotion, you get to buy an energy cleaner, $70 off retail, and a mattress pad, 10% off retail. $200 $200 of the purchase price of the energy cleaner goes to Republic Broadcasting. This is a great way to help get energy cleaners out to people who need them and have some uh, financial issues to deal with. And, of course, a great way to support Republic Broadcasting. Here's what you do. Send in a postcard. My address is John Moore, P.O. Box 201, Davidsville, Missouri. We pick a postcard every two weeks. If your postcard is drawn... Uh, you get the chance to buy the energy cleaner $70 off retail and 10% off the mattress pads. Put your name and your address, your telephone number and your email address on the postcard, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. J.R. Moore here on Wednesday, the 18th day of October. My website is libertyman.com. We're going over some of the uh, interesting images. We'll get back to that in a moment, images that I think are very important. Um, I'm not aware of anybody else in alternative media that's doing this research, and it's, it's our research. One human being could not possibly watch the hundreds of thousands of hours of television shows and movies produced in the last 65 years. They couldn't. It would be physically impossible. So it's our project, and let's move forward with that. Also, my website, of course, are energy claims for sale. Uh, it's pretty common. It's expected that men and women in the United States over age 50 are going to have one or more pharmaceutical prescriptions these days. I'm not one of them, thank goodness. I haven't had a pharmaceutical prescription since 1985. Sounds like 32 years to me. So I'm well into my fourth decade of no pharmaceutical products. Due in part, not entirely, that would be a foolish thing to say. I I do a lot of things related to health uh, involving nutrition and exercise and so forth, but due in part to my energy cleaner that I use every night, my energy cleaner that I use when I travel. And it's great. I'm pretty active around the ranch here, up and down ladders, off and on the Kubota tractor, pushing those really big logs and boulders into the bucket of the Kubota. They don't jump into the bucket by themselves. They have to be pushed manually. 
And sure, I go to bed with minor aches and pains. I wake up pain-free in the morning. You can also. I'll be talking to Diane Zerger in the next week or so. She's been had a hiatus uh, from being on my show with me. Uh, Diane has bought more than 12 energy cleaners over the years. I have a number of people who've bought three and four and five energy cleaners. One gentleman up in Minnesota bought five at one time a couple of weeks ago. These are bright men and women, educated men and women, who wouldn't buy the second, let alone the third or fourth or more, if the first one didn't work. What more do you need to know? I'll be talking to Steve Whitman also. He's got his fish camp shut down for the year, being October, and uh, he's back uh, doing his thing, writing novels. He's become a writer. Check out the energy cleaner at my website. At $285 shipping included, American zip codes. I do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Be sure and check out the factory-made fitted mattress pads. The call the uh, toll-free order line to place your order for an energy cleaner or mattress pad is 800-592-9543. I say again, 800-592-9543. Well, we're talking about these images that you folks are finding, images of continents with new coastlines, Let's see if I can find the most recent one. Um, I don't have an exact date. There's there's three images from f- different TV shows. Um, we have, um, well, actually two that, that are from this year I know of for, for certain. Louisiana Flip and Move, August 19th. And um, the Smithsonian, uh, that would be September 30th. So I guess that would be the most recent one. Uh, now, the, the Smithsonian, Smithsonian image um, is represents what North America looked like millions of years ago. That's what it represents. So the most recent one showing the Navy map would be Louisiana Flip and Move. And it was broadcast August 19th. It shows the master bedroom. Um, it's a TV show about people buying homes, fixing them up, and selling them is what it is. So they got this image on the wall here, what what they say is the master bedroom. It's a framed image of the world, map of the world. Florida's gone. Most of Mexico and Central, uh, and all of Central America is gone underwater. Baja California is gone. Italy's gone. Portugal's gone. Most of Spain is gone. And so forth. How about that? That that's a pretty good representation of uh, the uh, of the world after the fact, after the pole shift. That's what that is. Let's x that out there. It won't x out. There we go. Fascinating project, I think. These images have been in our face going back to 1952. All these images in movies and TV shows. How many hundreds of millions of people have seen these films? Godfather, Superman, Beautiful Mind, uh, and, you know, the winners. They picked the winners. Hunger Games, incredibly popular. NCIS, there's a sizable percentage of people that watch NCIS every week. Hugely popular TV show. We got the image from uh, a TV show. Uh, It may not be here. Oh, here we go. Investigation Discovery Series. This is a TV show about, uh, it was August the 8th, FBI trying to find the Unabomber. So we've got these FBI agents in this uh, office, and uh, they're discussing how they're going to locate the Unabomber. And on the wall behind these FBI agents is a map of the United States, the lower 48, and it's the Navy map in full color. It is the Navy map. No doubt about it whatsoever, no doubt in my mind. And um, it's... 
it's not crystal clear sharp, but it's, it's sharp enough. I just enlarge it a little bit here. Let's enlarge that thing again. Get up to about 150%. Uh, East Coast gone, Gulf States gone, half of Texas. Then we got uh, half part of Tennessee, part of Kentucky, all, all of Southern Illinois. And this one is a more recent map, of course. It was just broadcast a few weeks back. It shows the Inland Sea going all, all the way up to Chicago, which is really quite accurate based on what I know. So, uh, yeah. Um, it, it's well done. It's a it's a good representation, showing the inland sea, the east coast underwater, Gulf Coast gone, and so forth. The uh, inland sea in California, Baja California underwater. Actually, it's not that clear on this map that Baja California is underwater, but it will be. And then we got the um, damage up in uh, Washington State and, and uh, Oregon as well. There's no reason for that map to be on the wall. It is the Navy map. Of course it's the Navy map. Uh, and we'll find more. This project will continue into the next year. This began, oh, it's been about two and a half, three years ago. One of our listeners uh, found the image of the, uh, from the Godfather. And we uh, we had it posted. It was up. It was down. It's back up now. We don't. We're not going to be taking it back down. I don't know why it was ever taken down in the first place. But that that was the uh, Godfather having a conference with a high level Vatican official in the Vatican. This room is probably a, a thousand or fifteen hundred year old room, and with twenty foot ceilings. And there's murals of the map of the world on the wall there. At the time, I didn't think much about it because I've seen ancient maps before. I didn't know what I know now uh, when I when I first saw that. I didn't know that these images were going to be popping up all over in in multiple TV shows and um, movies. Now I'm looking at this image right now, and it shows uh, South America physically connected to the Antarctic, which I find fascinating. Uh, North America looks entirely different. Europe looks entirely different. And so forth. You need to educate yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Don't don't get caught up in the date. And, and let's go back to an earlier premise I was talking about. The uh, Field Training Exercise USS Liberty, December 31st, 2018. You want a date, there's your date. You get to pick your own premise or premises, uh, scenarios, yourself. I, I list five of them there. If you want to list some more, uh, you're all, you, you can, obviously. One through five, economic collapse leading to civil disorder. Number two, World War III. Number three, rapid onset, onset of violent earth changes. Four, Widespread terrorist attacks, five natural man-made EMP. Pick a scenario, any scenario. You want a date? I'm giving you a date. December 31st, 2018. It's 14 months away. 14 months. What can you do in 14 months? We can do a lot. The people who need a date are the ones who aren't prepared, by the way. I've said this many times. I will say it many more times. The people are searching for a date. John, when's it going to happen? Once you're living life with parents like I am or Tim Spencer, the date becomes irrelevant. Once you are prepared and you are preparing and you wake up in the morning, you do something every day to help further that goal a date becomes irrelevant we've got a caller and hold her we've got Joe in Indiana good morning Joe hi good morning John uh, I just had a couple of points uh, since you're talking about the map extensively today first one is uh, apparently heard earlier that uh, this map goes back to the 1940s maybe even earlier because you were talking about some magazine um, I, I, I missed that part but you know it's a real testimony to the intelligence 
and the integrity and the industriousness of, of the military at that time. I mean, back then when the technology was just very minimal, you know, compared to what we have today, and they, they came up with these things. And then my second point, which is in the form of a question, what initiated this whole thing? What caused the Navy to even have that type of research, or what was on the forefront? I'm going to hang up because somebody started their lawnmower. But okay. That'd be great. I'd like to... Okay, thank okay. you, John. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate the call. U.S. Navy is more than aircraft carriers and submarines and, and Tomahawk missiles. It's a lot more than that. The um, ONI, Office of Naval Intelligence, they, um, they recruit highly intelligent men and women. I've, I've known men and women who they've attempted to recruit. I know them personally. One gentleman of Asian descent, genius level IQ. He's not quite, but almost legally blind. Wears very thick glasses. They were going to give him a waiver on that. They wanted this guy so bad, he turned him down. Another woman I know, genius level IQ. They they made her very serious offers. They offered to give her a house, a very nice house, and a very high salary for a a person who at the time was still in her teens even offered her mother a house. She turned them down. Very bright men and women uh, working with Office of Naval Intelligence, working as scientists for the U.S. Navy. When it comes to the ocean and oceanography, the U.S. Navy uh, knows more than almost any entity on the planet, including the top universities and our competitors in Russia and China. They do. So it doesn't surprise me that the U.S. Navy would uh, do the research, find the facts, draw the maps, and make sure those maps were available to their own people, especially when it came to the U.S. Navy Submarine Corps. Now, not everyone in the Navy knows this. The uh, flag rank officers do, and I've traced back, because of one of my listeners, uh, the first briefing of flag rank officers in the Navy on this matter back to 1979. That's how far back we've traced it, because one of my listeners was there. He set up the room, the chairs, the tables, the lights, the, the sound system, the projector, and whatever else they had there, and the map was on the wall. When he, when he saw the map on my DVD global warming, what the government isn't telling you, he knew for the first time, this is 2009, by the way, he knew the first for the first time in 2009 what he was looking at in 1979, 30 years before. He didn't know. because He was, he was not allowed in the briefing room when the briefing was given. So, knowing what I know about the U.S. Navy and what they do and how they do it, um, doesn't surprise me at all that they would uh, do the research, get the facts, and then warn their own people, at least in submarine corps. And, and a lot of people don't understand who the submarine corps is. These are very bright men, and now I will say, unfortunately, women. I think women have no place being on submarines. It will ultimately turn out to be an absolute disaster. It already has been, quite frankly. The lowest IQ allowed on a submarine is 120, and they go up from there. These are very bright men. They don't wear the uniforms of the surface Navy. They have their own uniforms. They don't interact with the surface Navy. They don't talk to the surface Navy. They don't want to be around the surface Navy particularly. And most men assigned to the submarine corps say they're their entire career. The officers have meant both. If you're on a Navy crew, on a submarine crew, and you screw up, people are going to die. Everybody is literally, not figuratively, everybody is literally dependent on everybody else. You're going to be in a tin can underwater for six months. You, you're going to go through the most stringent psychological diagnostics that you can imagine to make sure that you can hold up under that kind of pressure. No pun intended, because they are, the submarines are pressurized, obviously. 
So, uh, yes. Yes. Um, the U.S. Navy has known about this since 1979. Uh, the flag rank officers have always known since then. And, the, um, and they uh, take care of their own. That's what they do. They take care of their own. No surprise. No surprise at all. And that's the way it should be. I would like to see all the services do that, but the Navy is the only one I know of that's done it. And it's not even all the Navy. It's just the submarine corps. It takes care of their own people in that manner. When I did my presentation in Detroit on this matter, uh, I found out that, the, that there's thousands of Navy veteran, veterans in the zip codes of the Arkansas, Missouri Ozarks. They've gone there because of the map. Here's our break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Field training exercise, USS Liberty, December 31st, 2018. Fourteen months away. You pick your own scenario, or scenarios, plural, and start getting ready. You want a date? I'm giving you a date. You pick your own scenario. Fourteen months. What can you do in 14 months? Hey, you can do a lot. There's an awful lot you can do in 14 months. Get your training, get your first aid training, get your CPR training. That's not going to cost you hardly any money at all, maybe nothing. Get your ham radio license. That's going to be a minimal cost. Get your first aid equipment. You can start that at your local dollar store, Walgreens, whatever, supermarket. They'll have first aid supplies. Start putting have got their first aid kit. Ham radio equipment. Doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Doesn't have to. Really, it doesn't have to. It's, a, quite frankly, a fairly inexpensive hobby compared to many others. I think we can all think of a lot more expensive hobbies than ham radio, can't we? It's a fun hobby, and you meet some interesting people. Get yourself in shape. You should be doing it anyway, right? Does it cost anything to walk, walk around the block a few times? Walk around the park a few times? Start storing up some water if water's an issue where you live? Rinse out two-liter soda bottles. You can probably have people give those to you. That doesn't say it's going to cost you anything to store up some water. Buy some extra beans and rice. And go to the supermarket. Store it up properly. You can do a lot in 14 months. You really can. Now, everybody's got limitations. You need to work within your limitations. That's just a natural and normal thing to do. Understand those limitations are. Don't. Do not anguish over what you can't do. Take joy in what you can do. That's healthy. That's healthy. Get your spiritual house in order. If there's only one thing you can do and nothing else, you get your spiritual house in order. That's the most foundational, the most important single thing that you can do for yourself. Get your skills. They can't take the skills away from you. Get those skills. Establish a safe haven. It's going to be different things for different people. You may be choosing a shelter in place. You may be choosing a destination in some distance from where your normal home is. Whatever it is, establish your own safe haven. And be sure and have a plan B. Everybody needs a plan B, don't they? So you got a goal in mind, a, a specific date, December 31st, 2018, 14 months away. Get yourself a spiral notebook, just like you had in high school, and write everything down you need to do, write everything down that you have done, a list of goals, and check off those goals as you achieve them. It can be very satisfying to do that. That's what I did for Y2K. I still have that spiral notebook, by the way. I look at it once a year or so just to remind me of what I did back then. Develop a team. You need a team. It could be relatives, friends, people you go to work, you work with, church group, whatever it is, neighbors. 
that's it. Get going. You got a date. Work towards it. In the meantime, get medical supplies, your energy cleaner, your essential oils now while you can, your firearms, and ammunition. Never, ever give up your guns. Please do have a fun, safe, productive day. And God bless America.